Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today, yes, we are doing another solo playthrough of Gaia Project. I already have one already out on the channel from about four years ago. Uh, I ended up selling this game but then ended up getting it back because I like it so much. I actually got the Terra Mystica with the solo expansion and was playing that and it reminded me how much I like this better. So I was going to do a Terra Mystica playthrough and it ended up being this. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm not going to do a full setup because I do already have one of those on the channel. I'll put a link in the description below. Also, if I make any errors and I miss it in editing, I will put those in Klingon subtitles. They should be popping up right now. So make sure you have those subtitles on. So in case I make any errors, I can make sure that you know while you're watching. With that, let's see which faction we're going to play, which AI faction we're going to play against, and then start our playthrough. We're going to be playing the faction, the Geodins. The Geodins start one up on the terraforming track. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. I chose my round booster. We also have the AI randomly chose their round booster. And because we start up on the terraforming track by one, we start with two additional ore than we normally would. We're going to be playing against the Itars. They are relatively simple in understanding. They do gain a lot of points whenever they do their faction action, but I like them because they don't have ongoing abilities. They're pretty straightforward to play. In general, when you are playing against the AI, it is helpful if you choose a color that is hard for you to terraform because that means that it's going to be hard for them to terraform your planets. And so generally, you won't get in each other's way too much right at the beginning. <laughs> But if you want a harder game, you can certainly do that. We've set up our scoring board. You can see all the different ways that we can score dependent upon which round it is. Uh, we have our two end game scoring. So this one is all about having different uh, sectors. We want to have one of our buildings in all of the different sectors if we can. If we can do that, there are seven sectors in the solo game. We can sneak ourselves up to here. Uh, for this one, we had this one the last time we played. This is uh, planet variety. So we want the most variety of planets of having our buildings on. So if I can get one on every single one of those, that would be eight. So I could get myself up to here. We are going against the AI, but there's also this uh, neutral player and we count them in when doing our points here. So let's say at the end of the game, we were only here and the AI would be up here. We would then only score six points versus if we tied, at least with the neutral player, we'd score nine points, six plus 12 divided by two. We'll start with only one planet type that we have our buildings on. That's our own planet type. And then we both started on two different sectors. So that's why I have us at two here. For round one, we want to try and build a planetary institute or an academy. If we could do both, that's impossible. If we could do both, we could score 10 points. Uh, I'm going to try and go for the planetary institute, I think. One of the best additions to this game, and the reason why I like this so much better than Terra Mystica, is that these tech tracks, you get benefits as you move up them. That doesn't happen as much in the uh, base game of Terra Mystica, so that's why I am definitely preferring Gaia Project. We start here at level one on the terraforming track, and you can see any of these symbols that have a star by it, you immediately gain that benefit. So we started with two additional ore because of it. We each start at 10 victory points. And finally, we each have two mines that are on the board. You can see the white player, hopefully you can see this. They chose these two spots because they are the closest to the center. I chose here because remember, I am the orange planet. The reason I put myself in this corner, but I'm within range two of our AI player is if I go to a trading station here, I can upgrade at a reduced cost because I'm within range two. I can also generate power if they decide to upgrade this uh, mine. I have chosen a total of five random round boosters. This is the one the AI is going to have right now. That's the one they randomly chose. These are the three that are in the supply. And then I have mine. Mine's going to give me a free terraform and two additional gold during income. The AI's round booster does nothing except for block it so I can't choose it. With all of that out of the way, we can start our playthrough. The first phase is the income phase. I always love that we get income right away. So the amount of gold we'll gain is two here. So I'll move this up by two. So we have a total of 15 plus two, 17 gold. We have one total knowledge. So we can move to four instead of three. And then we have three more ore here, one, two, three. The AI doesn't generate any resources, so that means we can jump right into our first action. And you know the first action I'm going to do. I want to do an upgrade. Before we do our first action, I do want to show you the eight actions that we can take during this phase. We could place out a mine. So we put out a mine on a new planet that we have to terraform to ensure that we can place that mine there. So we have to pay the cost for the mine and terraform the planet. 
we can try and Gaia form a transdim planet into a Gaia planet where we can then place a mine there in a future round. We can do upgrades, upgrade our buildings. We can create a federation. We can spend four knowledge to move up one of the tech tracks. We can do any of the power actions that's on that tech board. We can do any special actions that we have on our board, which for an example, that would be the one right here where we can gain a terraform. And the final one is we can pass. And when we pass, we put our round marker back in with the other round markers and choose one that hasn't been chosen yet. You're always considered the first player whenever playing solo. And our first action will be to upgrade. We're gonna upgrade one of the two mines that we have out with a trading station. Now, normally that costs six gold and two ore, but if you're within range two of any of your opponent's uh, buildings, you get to reduce the cost of gold by three. So it's going to cost us three gold, two ore. We're gonna grab this off of our player board and then we're gonna have to place the mine back here. So that means if I just left it like that uh, at the end of the, or the beginning of the next round, we would gain three additional money, but uh, one less ore during the income phase. So it's a little bit of a balancing act. Three gold, one, two, three and a total of two or one, two, we're down to seven. This mine is within range two to our opponent, so we're going to replace that mine with that trading station. Now it's to the AI's turn. I built the AI deck with the six starting cards plus one random advanced card from this stack. Then we shuffle all those up, flip three of them sideways. You can see how three are sideways, the other four are on top. And when we get to those three that are sideways, if we see an X symbol on the support card, that means we are going to stop their turn and they're claiming end of round for themselves. So we'll draw the first two. Okay, right away, they're doing a faction action. This means we need to look at their faction card and resolve it. The Atars are going to block power and QIC actions and gain four victory points. They're gonna use this to determine which spaces to block. Four victory points puts them up to 14. They're gonna jump ahead. You're gonna see they're gonna jump way ahead of us in this game and we're gonna to have to slowly claw ourselves back. <laughs> then they're going to block one, two, three, four. You saw how that arrow was pointing to the left. So you count from right to left, one, two, three, four. They're gonna block this one. And then they're gonna block another one that's four to the left, one, two, three, and you skip that one, four. So they just took these two spots. They're not going to do any of those actions. They're just taking them away from us. Let's nab five victory points, shall we? <laughs> we are going to upgrade to our Planetary Institute. This will cost one, two, three, four, five, six total gold and four ore, one, two, three, four. And we can replace our trading station with that Planetary Institute. Also, now that our Planetary Institute is built, we have this ability. And it says, when you colonize a new planet type, we will gain three knowledge. This means we can replace this building with our Planetary Institute, but of course we're blocking our three gold uh, income that we had just opened up by placing that trading station. We will though be able to gain five victory points, putting us at 15. We're now back to the AI's turn and I just want to explain, this is the area that you're always looking for when you're trying to do the action for the AI. It's so cool because it's two different cards together. So for this next turn, we know they're going to try and build a mine. We don't know where they're going to build it because the next card will help them determine that. And we know they're going to score one point. So we will discard this card, slide this over, grab the next card. Oh, that's so cool. And you can see it. You see how these green uh, icons are here? That tells you these are the different things they're going to use to help them determine where they should place their mine. First thing I always do is give them the victory points on the card so I don't forget. So they gained one victory point. And now we can look at this card and determine where they're going to place the mine. The first section you'll want to look at is the range. You can see here they can place this mine within range two of any of their other buildings that are out on the board. Next then they walk through all of these tiebreakers and depending upon these tiebreakers that will help us determine where we need to place that mine. I'm using these blue satellite tokens as potential locations for the mine that can be placed by the AI. You can see all these planets are within range two of the two planets they have mines on. That's the first step. Then we would look to see if there's any faction action tiebreaker. They don't have one, so we'll jump right to the next one, and that is the final scoring tiebreaker. That's what this section stands for. You see how there's an X here, but there is not an X on this one. That means they're going to look at the lower scoring, uh, final scoring tile, and then try and use that to help them determine where to place their mines. Here's the thing, that lower scoring tile though is just looking for planet variety, and all those planets that I chose are not white planets, <laughs> so that won't help. 
The next tiebreaker is fewest terraforming steps. That's why I have this card here. I'm blocking off the other faction types so you can just see the white faction. The lowest terraforming steps are these three planets. Now these green planets, that's also the transdom planets, the purple ones. They'll automatically Gaia pro make them a Gaia planet and place their mine there. So we have to include purple, black, and blue. This definitely narrowed it down a bit. We have one, two, three, four, five more planets to choose from. After looking at fewest terraforming steps, they look at closest to your planets. Our planet is here and here. This is the obvious closest planet. So we'll take all of these off and we're gonna place a mine there. Although this is helping the AI by uh, increasing the amount of different planet types they have buildings on, this is also super helpful to us. We have our Planetary Institute. It is within range two of that building that was just placed or an upgrade that's just happened. We now, for a simple VP cost, can generate some power because of this. What we do is we pick any of the of the buildings that are within range two of whatever planet was just upgraded or built, and we can generate power based upon the level of the building that we have with that's within range two. Now let's say we had multiple planets within range two that we had buildings on it. We can only choose one of the buildings. We can't choose all of them. The Planetary Institute can generate three total power. So what we can do is lose victory points equal to the amount of power we would generate minus one. So lose two victory points to generate three power. And we're definitely going to do that. One of the interesting parts of this game are the power bowls here. Whenever you generate power, you're gonna move power from bowl one to bowl two first, then from bowl two to bowl three. Anything in bowl three you can use to do those power actions, and then they get placed back into power or bowl one. We can also do a Gaia form one of those transient planets by placing our power over here, uh, but we can't do that until we move up that track a bit. Right now, I'm gonna generate the three power, one, two, three, and we're going to lose two victory points. The scoring board has all the eight planets on it, and what I like to do to keep track of which ones I have already have buildings on is placing tokens on them. So the white ones are for the AI, and the orange ones, of course, are us. So they now have two. We'll also update that on here, but that was not on a new sector, so we would not increase this. I should probably talk about the different sectors. The sectors are the different tiles. Let's see if I can move these. I have a sticky mat, which is nice most of the time. <laughs> you can see how these are different uh, sector tiles. There are a total of seven of them. So if we can get a mine on all seven of those, that would be awesome. Of course, the AI is also trying to do that. It's now our turn again, and I think I'm going to try and terraform a planet by being able to place a new mine there. In order to do that, I have to generate enough terraforming for that planet and have enough range to be able to access that planet. So I'm gonna cover this up to say that I'm generating one terraform from my round booster. The planet type that I am trying to terraform is a red planet, so I only need one terraforming, so I'm good there. In order to build a mine, I need to spend two gold and one ore. That means we're down to only two ore and five gold. The tech track tells you your range. Our range right now is only one, but we can increase it as we go up this tech tree. If we go all the way to the end, it can be range four, which is awesome. And then let's say we had to generate that terraforming. Right now it cost us three ore to try and gain one level of terraforming. So to terraform that red planet would normally cost us three ore, plus the one ore for the more, uh, the actual uh, mine, so that'd be four ore, which is why that's super expensive. So it's nice that I had that round booster so I can get the free terraform. The range one red planet is right here. This will mean we now have our second planet type. We've tied up with the AI having two different planet types. And then the best part is we just colonized a new planet type. So we'll gain three knowledge, one, two, three. We have seven knowledge. We're now back to the AI. We'll discard this card. We will flip this one over and we have an upgrade. So first they'll gain that one victory point and then they're going to try and upgrade one of their buildings. They always try to go to a planetary institute first, but you can only do that if you have a trading post. They don't have any trading posts, so they are going to try and do a trading post first right now. And of course, they will sneak up to 16 points. They have three mines that they can upgrade. So we look at the tiebreaker. The first tiebreaker is closest to our planets. That means they are definitely going to upgrade this one. And that means we can lose two more victory points to gain three more power. Definitely gonna do that. As the AI charges ahead, we will charge backwards. <laughs> 
that's totally okay. We're playing the long game. The AI is playing a consistent game. We're playing the long game. We now have four power that we can use, and I do think I am going to use all four of the power here for our next action. Looking at our player board, we're going to generate three ore, but we're not gaining any gold. So I'm going to use this power action. I cover it up so I can't use it a second time in this round, but I'm going to gain seven gold. We'll move from six to 13 gold. It's now the Atar's turn. We're going to discard this card. Now, if this card that we flip has this X symbol, they are not going to take a turn here. They're simply going to pass and they are going to do another action they're going to upgrade not only that they're going to gain another victory point they want to place out a planetary institute the only place they can do that is right here we once again can lose two victory points for three power and we're going to do it again at the beginning of the game i like as much power as possible because you can eke out just a few more things that you can do in a turn it's almost always good We'll generate that three power from this bowl. Now, what another thing you can do from bowl two, I can lose one power to then charge a power into bowl number three. Lose another power, do another one into bowl number three. I'm not doing that right now, but if I wanted to, and especially at the end of the game, that can be super helpful to eke out just a few more actions for a turn. The action we are going to take is spending four knowledge. We're going to go down to three to go up on one of the tech tracks. Every track here is awesome, but the one I like to go up at the beginning, if I can, is this income track because the higher up you go on this track, the earlier the game, the more you claim these benefits. You can see these hand symbols. That means you'll only gain those benefits during the income phase. Well, there's only five more income phases. So if I moved up to here right at the end of the game, that's worthless. <laughs> Also, I do want to remind you, this tech track, you'll, you'll gain victory points uh, equal to four for every level that you go up uh, in three, four, and five. So if I was here, that would score me 12 points. However, in order to get to the top of any of these tracks, which by the way, only one player can, you have to have one of these federation tokens, and you'll see when we claim these how that works. You have to be able to flip one over to its gray side, otherwise you can't even move to the um, fifth and topmost spot of the tech tracks. We're back to the AI's turn. We will see if this one has an X, and it does. Awesome. So since it has an X, we look here and we see which round booster they're going to take, and then they're gonna place this one on the rightmost side. What's also nice about having this X symbol is they don't gain the victory points and they don't do this action. They were the first ones though to end claim end of round for themselves, so they will be first player next time. I'm also going to randomly grab this top card from the upgrade deck and shuffle this in with the other cards for the next round. They will claim this round booster and then we'll slide this booster in here and these will be the three that we can choose from when we decide to pass. Looking at our board, we do have an option of upgrading to another trading post this round, but the next round we gain four victory points for every trading post that we put out. So I think I'm going to hold and do the same thing that the AI did and just simply pass. That's where the round scoring tiles can be very important. It can influence the types of actions you're taking in specific rounds. The round booster I'm thinking of taking is this one. I'm going to slide these down. This will give me just a little bit more uh, gold as well as another QIC, which I can use to help increase my range when placing out new new buildings on different planets. We now will move to the cleanup phase, removing all of these tokens so all of those power actions are available to us. I should have mentioned when the AI passed, they would gain the victory points on the left side of these scoring tiles in rounds one, two, and three, and the right side of the scoring tiles in four, five, and six, uh, those rounds. So this round, they scored zero additional for this one, so we're good. But the next one, when they pass, they will score three points. However, when we finish the game at round six, when they pass, they're going to score four points because that's on the right-hand side of these tiles. To start our second round, we'll begin the income phase. We can see here we will generate two gold and charge one power. Our gold will move from 13 to 15. We generate two power, one here, and then one moves to here. Because we placed out our planetary institute, you can see here we can also charge four more power, one, two, three, four, and then there's this plus one. That means we can place a new power into our power uh, section here, and it always comes in at level one. So we now have another power to play with. 
that's good and bad. <laughs> it's good because we can charge more power, but it's bad because we charge power more slowly. This is another thing with Terra Mystica. You start with 12 on the board instead of only 6, so it's a lot harder to charge all that power. We then will gain 2 gold from our round booster that we have. We'll gain 1 knowledge here, and then we'll gain 1, 2, 3 ore. So we're at 2, that'll put us to 5 ore here. And finally, we'll gain 1 QIC, which is super awesome. You can see over here, you also can, for free actions, convert things into different item types. So I can convert a QIC, discard it for plus two range, which is why I like those right now. They also are used in order for us to terraform a Gaia planet, because you can see the Gaia planets aren't on here at all. We would then move into the Gaia phase, but I did not put any power over here to turn a transdim planet into a Gaia planet, so we can skip that. We'll go into the action phase. The AI is first player, so they'll go first. The AI will start this round during the action phase first because they passed first last round. So we can see here they're going to do a faction action, scoring, well, zero points additional, but we know their faction action means they're going to take up two of the QIC or power action slots and gain four victory points. They're going to look at the two rightmost spaces. Four points, one, two, three, four, up to 21, and both of these spots have been taken. We're then going to use four out of our five power here that we've charged, and we're going to gain ourselves two ore. We'll move from five to seven ore. The AI will then discard this card. We'll slide this down and draw their next one. They're going to try and place a mine within range two, and we can see here they're going to look for planet variety instead of looking at sectors because of this is their final uh, scoring tile, which one they're going to look at. We'll do the three points so I don't forget. One, two, three. I've placed blue satellite tokens on all planets within range 2 that are not planets they already have a buildings on, so you can see this black one we're not including. We then can look at fewest terraforming steps. Those will be the green and blue ones. So we've got a blue one here, that's a green one, remove this one, this one, and this one. And then we're looking at the closest one to our planets. That's going to be this Gaia planet. We'll place out their third mine. Now that is within range two of our mines, so we don't even have to lose a victory point. We can simply gain one power. I am a little bit bummed about that because that Gaia planet was pretty close to us. I was thinking of going there, but I didn't have enough time. We'll place a marker here, noting that they now have a Gaia planet that they control, and they now have three different planet types. It's now back to our turn. We are going to put out a trading station. It will cost us two total of the ore and only one, two, and three total of the gold. So we're down to 14 gold. You can barely see that. But I can place this out and that will score us four points. The one nice thing is the AI now controls this planet and both of these are within range too. So I was thinking I was going to have to spend more gold to be able to put out this one over here. But now because I'm in range two, both of those will only cost three gold. Four points will move us one, two, three, a four. We're at 13. We just scored four points. That's great and all, except for that the AI is going to score three points right here and cover up the power spot two points, two spots to the left. Three points, one, two, three. Like I said, they're going to blow ahead of us at first, and we're going to have to claw our way back as we play. We'll sneak out another trading station for three gold. One, two, three, and two ore going down to three. And this will score us another four points. We'll move up. One, two, three, four, two, seventeen. We're back again to the AI, and they're going to score one point and upgrade one of their buildings. One point will move them up to 28. They have three mines here, so they have to choose between which one of these three they're going to upgrade. They upgrade the one that's closest to our buildings, but this one is within range two of our buildings, and this one is within range two of our buildings. That means we have to look at this directional symbol. We're going to start at the bottom right-hand side of the board and just go from right to left, row by row up, until we find the first one that we can upgrade. Looking at these two mines, that means we'll choose this one to upgrade, and we can lose one victory point to gain two power. We'll move ourselves back down to 16 points, generating two power from bowl one to bowl two. For our next action, I think I'm going to upgrade one of our trading stations now to a space station. 
we can go to the trading uh, trading post to a space station to an academy. I'm going to go for the space station. That will cost five gold. One, two, three, four, five. And three ore. So we're all the way down to zero for ore. But when you put out a trading or a space station, you also gain a tactile. So we can talk about that in a second. I'll replace this trading post with the space station. And then I can gain either a basic tactile or an advanced tactile. Now, in order to grab an advanced tactile, I need to have one of my markers in either location four or five in the row that I want to choose one of these. I then have to flip one of these Federation tokens that I have from green over to the gray side, and I need to be able to cover up one of these regular tactiles with the advanced. So I definitely can't get the advanced yet. <laughs> Instead, I can choose one of these down here. Now, if I chose this one, I would then immediately move up this track. If I chose this one, I'd move up that track. If I chose these bottom three, I can choose any track to move up. What I'd like to do, because I am worried about my gold for the next round, is I'm gonna grab this tactile, which means I'll immediately move up one on the terraforming track. This now means it only costs us two ore to terraform. We're now back to the AI, and now they could potentially pass. Let's see if they do. Oh, yes, they do. You see that X? That means they will not do this action. They're going to take the rightmost uh, round booster, putting their other one back, and they're going to gain, for this round, three points. You can see the three points right here. That's why they're gaining the three points. And, of course, I'm adding another card to their deck. They will grab the one ore production and research production and slide this one in. For our next action, I'm going to create a federation. This is one of the actions you haven't seen yet. If you have structures with a total power of seven or more, you can create a federation with them, but you have to connect them. These two are already connected. Each of them are worth two power. This, our Planetary Institute, is worth three, three, four, five, six, seven. So I am good to go, but I have to connect them. So I'm going to place out three satellite tokens, and that will connect them. But in order to place those satellite tokens, I need to lose three power. That means I will remove two from here and one from here, and I no longer will have that power in my power combination here. But I do have ways, for example, here to gain more power. So it's not the end of the world. When you create a federation, you can choose one of these federation tokens and immediately gain the benefit. I definitely want this one, so I'll gain seven victory points and two ore. This will mean we can move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Catching up to that AI. Two ore is pretty great because my next action then, because the AI has passed, we can continue to play. I am going to spend one of these QICs, and you can see it over in this corner. I'm going to convert that into one ore, so I'll have three ore. I'm going to upgrade that other training post to another uh, space station. One, two, three. <laughs> I'm going down to one, you guys, and one gold. But that means I'll get another tech tile and I can advance on yet another tech track. When you've created a federation, you certainly can still change the buildings that are connected, and it's completely fine. I can go above or below that power amount. It doesn't matter. What matters is, though, I cannot use these three uh, planets for any federation in the future. Without a doubt, I'm going to grab this tech tile, which will gain us one research or one knowledge and one gold each income phase, and that will move us up on this track. I also still have four knowledge I can use. I'll go down to zero for that, and I'll move up on one tech track. Let's continue to move up the income tech track. Now we'll gain one or three gold and three power charging uh, during each income phase. And because we went over this, we can immediately power up or charge up three of our power, which if you ask me is pretty great because we now have four power in our bowl number three, and we're going to use all four of that power. What do you say we gain some gold? So we have some gold for the next round. We'll gain seven of it. Seven plus the one we have here puts us to eight gold. I think at this point we can end our turn. I would say that was overall a pretty successful round, getting out two space stations. This is the thing that's going to hurt us. We're not gaining a lot of ore and no gold here because both of these are not out. So I'm going to try and get some mines out next round. But the round marker or the scoring markers want us to get mines out. We scored two points per. So that's kind of what I was going for. Also, look at all this research. We're going to gain four research ever, or four knowledge 
every round, which is great. This round tracker here would be pretty great. We'd score six points when we turn that in if we kept those space stations out. But I really need some help with terraforming, so I think I'm going to grab this one and put this one back in. I was actually eyeing the one that would give us ore and more knowledge, but the AI took it, of course. During our end phase, then, we'll remove all of these action tokens. We'll flip over the next scoring tile. Now for this scoring tile, as I mentioned, we're going for mines. The AI will score four points at the end of the round for this one. We can move right into income for round three, gaining one ore, three gold, and three power. We'll move our ore up by one, three gold, one, two, three, and we can charge three power. Then we can charge four power here, one, two, three, four, and we can gain another power, so we'll put that power here. We'll gain three knowledge here, one, two, three. We'll gain one ore here, sneaking us up to two. And then over here we have two plus four is six, plus one is seven gold and one more knowledge. Seven gold, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one more knowledge puts us, puts us up to four. We then move to the Gaia phase, but I'm still not doing any Gaia forming on a Transdim planet, so we can skip that. We'll move right to the action phase. Once again, the AI uh, ended the round first, so they'll go first. Before we start that action phase, I am going to call one mulligan, and that's on this satellite token. I really should have put it here. I was thinking that I should do that, and I missed it, and that's the hard part about recording. Why that's important, if I have it here, and I try and terraform this planet, that uh, specific building is going to be part of this federation that's out on the board, and I can't use it to create a new one. I don't want that. I want to be able to create a new federation. So I really should have connected it with these three spaces. So my apologies there. Hope you're okay with that. Once again, the AI will act first. So we have a power QIC action. They're going to gain three victory points and cover one of the spots. Three victory points. One, two, three. Puts them up to 31. And four from the right, one, two, three, four, they're going to cover this spot. What do you say we terraform that yellow planet, huh? We're going to use our free one terraform. You can see yellow planets. We only need one terraform. We are going to discard our one QIC for plus two range. So we can do this up to range three. A mine costs one ore and two gold. And we're going to place this out. This will also mean we've colonized a new planet type. One, two, three. We just gained three more knowledge. We're within range three of one of our planets. Unfortunately, this is not a new sector, but we're getting ourselves branched out so we can start jumping to different sectors. The AI will now build a mine, and they're going to build a mine within range two. No scoring uh, to make a determination on where they're going to place it. They're not going to look at either one. Uh, they are going to gain one victory point. They'll gain that one, but we need to remember we gained two victory points because we placed out a mine, and that's the scoring tile. We've marked all the planets that are within range two. We have no faction action tiebreaker and no final scoring tiebreaker. We look at fewest terraforming steps. That would be the green and purple, black and blue. We now only have four planets to choose from. Now we have to choose closest to our planets, and that's going to be this one here. So we'll place a Gaia uh, planet there. And we'll place a mine in this spot. And what's nice is that's on the same sector. So they don't add an additional sector. We can lose one victory point to gain two power. That is most certainly worth it. Gaining our two power will mean we have four in bowl three. The next action we are going to take, we're going to use all four of our power here, and we're going to generate some very much needed ore. That'll move us from one to three ore. The faction action is next for the AI. They'll score four points and block two spots, five from the left. Four points is 36, and five from the left, one, two, three, four, five. They're going to cover this one up and then they're gonna cover up this one here. As usual, I'm getting all ahead of myself. I should notate that I now have three different planet types that I have buildings on. We have a total of seven knowledge, one, two, three, four. We're going to use four for our next action. In order for us to put out another mine, I need more range, but I won't get to more range till I get to here on this track. So I'm just gonna move here. That will gain us one QIC. I can use that QIC to get plus two range. 
the AI then will slide this down and they are randomly going to go up one of the tracks. I think that's the first time you've seen this. So they will go up the first track from the left on the tech track and they're also going to gain two points. This will move them up to here and two more points puts them at 38. My ore production was pretty brutal this round. What I think I'm going to do is place out another mine. This will score me two points using a QIC that I just took off my board for plus two range. I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to do another orange planet, which is my color, so I don't have to terraform it at all. So I just need to spend one ore and two gold going down to 14. That's a range of three. One, two, three. We can go here. We are now on a new sector. We're finally branching out a bit. And of course, we'll move to 27 points. The AI then will do an upgrade and they'll score one point. Uh, they are looking from top to bottom uh, to determine which building they're going to upgrade. One point puts them, oh, you know, at 39. <laughs> they have three total mines that they can upgrade to the trading post. It's going from left to right, top to bottom, so they will upgrade this one, which is great because we can lose two victory points to charge three power because of our Planetary Institute. We'll move back down to 24 points. We'll move three out of our four power from bowl one to bowl two. Well, I hate to say it, but I don't really see anything else that we want to do this round, so I'm going to grab this round booster because if we keep those two space stations out, that'll score us six points. And it gives us some more research, and we'll put this one here. That means we'll be first player next round. The AI could be done. Let's see if they are. Uh, they are not. You see that? That's green. That means they are going to do an upgrade looking from top to bottom. They still have some mines out on the board, so it will be a trading post and one victory point. That'll tick them up to 40. The two mines they have left are here and here. They'll grab this one. Let's lose one victory point for two power, shall we? I mean, at this point, <laughs> what's one victory point? Two power will hopefully help us for the next round. We'll see now if the AI will pass. Are they going to? Oh, thank goodness, they are. They will pass and they'll take that middle round booster, putting this one back. That means they'll grab the two coins and one QIC, sliding this down here. They'll also score four victory points because of this round or the scoring tile. And now the next time they will score six points for this one because we'll be in round four and we will generate two victory points for every amount of terraforming we generate this round. Four more points puts them up to 44. We'll then clean up the board for the end phase and start right away with round four in income. One or three gold and charge three power. One or we'll take that three gold, one two, three, and charge three power. One, two, three. We are then going to gain our power first from here. So we can put that here and then charge four. One, two, three. So we're, uh, we lost one, but that's still worth it. So it's good to note you can determine how you want to gain these abilities or benefits for income. I could have chosen this first or second. We then have three more ore. Thank goodness. One, two, three. That puts us up to six three in knowledge here that puts us up to six knowledge we have two more knowledge income on our round booster and one of our tactiles and then five more gold one two three four five once again we have no gaia forming so we can skip that phase we'll move right into the action phase and we'll go first this time the last thing that i want is the ai doing something that i could generate power and i can't so i think the first action i'm going to do is use four of my power. I think we all know what I'm going for. Or please. Or gives us terraforming and terraforming gives us points. Let's see now what the AI has cooked up for us. Okay, just three points and covering spot five from the right. Three points, one, two, three at 47. Five from the right, one, two, three, four, five. We're then going to use four out of the eight of our knowledge, and we're going to move up one on the terraforming track. We're now going to score four points at the end of the game for this, and we can power up three or charge up three of our power. That means three out of the four power in bowl one move to bowl two. The AI will respond by doing another QIC power action, five from the left and one point. That's 48 points for them. Five from the left, one, two, three, four, five. Let's spend the other four knowledge 
and we're going to move up this track so we can gain one QIC. I really wanted to go for range, but I have a planet in mind that I'm going for, and this will allow me to get there. The AI will respond by gaining two points and moving up track four to the uh, from the right. That's a total of 50 points. One, two, three, four. They decided to follow my lead. <laughs> It's time for us to put out a mine. We're going to terraform a blue planet. It's within range three, so I have to use this QIC. So that's gonna give us range three. We need to spend two ore for the two levels of terraforming. That also will gain us four points. Then we need to spend one ore and two gold in order to put out the mine. The blue planet that's in range three is right here. If we go here, that gives us another sector and that gives us another planet type, which will also have us gain three knowledge. Let's grab the four points, one, two, three, four. That is a fourth planet type and our fourth sector. We'll place our token here to denote that we now have one of the blue planets. And of course, three knowledge is nothing to scoff at. The AI will respond by also building a mine. And let's see, they're going to look at getting uh, varieties of sectors for here at range two and one point. This will put them to 51 points. Based on how I see it, there's only two planets that they have that are on a different sector. They're not in sector one and that are within range two because uh, none of these are within range two that are in a different sector. This one's just range three, just out of reach for them. After looking at the final scoring tiebreaker, we look at the fewest terraforming steps. Well, that's another Gaia planet. So they're gonna do that here. This is also within range two of one of our uh, buildings, so we can lose one victory point to charge two, and I'm a two power. I'm going to do that. That will give them a third sector. I'll lose that one victory point to be able to grab two power. We now have three in our third bowl, and the question is, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to lose this power, so I have four here, and I'm going to use all four of those right now. With the four power that we had, we'll gain two more knowledge. That will move us up to six total knowledge. The next card for the AI, I think is the first time we're seeing this, they are going to advance their highest research. Now, if they had a tie, they would use this to determine which one it is, and they're going to score one point. They now have 52 points. We currently do have a tie for which one is the highest, so we're supposed to do one from the left, so that's this one, they'll move up. If they get one more on this one, they'll score four points at the end of the game. With our five knowledge here, we're going to spend four so we can move up on another tech track. Gosh, I love this nation. I love moving up all of these tech tracks. It's now time for us to have a range of two for being able to place out our buildings. The AI next will do an upgrade and they're going to do it while gaining one point and I do think they still have a mine out so they're gonna put out this trading post. That'll be another point for them. They actually have two mines out, one here and here, but we have to do the tiebreaker and the tiebreaker is going from low to high. So this one is going to get upgraded. That means we can passively charge one power for free. No loss of victory points for this, I'm okay with it. There's a black planet within range two. The black planets cost us three terraforming. It's very expensive. But remember, our terraforming is only one ore. I think I'm gonna go for it because I now have range two. That means this will cost us three ore, one, two, three, to do the terraform, and then one more ore and two gold to put out that mine. However, I'm placing it in a new planet, so that means I'll go back up to four knowledge. Range two of our planets is right here. This is also in a new sector. And of course, we made three terraforming. Three times two is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We gained six victory points there. This means we can place a token here. We are now in five sectors and have five different planet types. The AI could potentially pass here and they don't ever seem to pass on that first card, do they? <laughs> They're gonna do the faction action. So they'll score four points and block two spots. Four more points, one, two, three, four. They're counting from the left, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, and four. We've used up almost all of these. We have four knowledge, let's go ahead and use it. We'll move one up on the terraforming track, gaining us two more ore. We now have three ore. 
the AI. Let's see if they will end their round. They will, and they're going to take the middle round booster. And for good measure, they'll score six points, because why not? We'll move them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. They will grab this terraforming and gold, moving this one down and placing this one here. And they will be first player next round. And I forgot to say last time they gained a card, they're gonna gain yet another card for this round. Looking at the board state, I actually think I'm also going to pass. I'm going to turn this one in. Now when I do that, because I have two space stations, I will gain six victory points. I'm also going to grab this round booster because I love my ore and I love my research or knowledge. Six points will move us one, two, three, four, five, six. We're at what, 38. We'll then refresh all of these round boosters for the end of the round. Or these aren't round boosters, they're action markers. And of course, we will move to round five. Now in round five, we're looking to make federations. I'm hoping to make two maybe this round. <laughs> If I can, each time we do, we gain, we gain five points in addition to whatever's on that Federation token. The AI will score five points at the end of this round. We can move to the income phase in round five, gaining one or three gold and charging three power. One or three gold, one, two, three, and three power. I have so much gold, it's ridiculous. We also have for income four total power charging, one, two, three, four, and then we will gain a new power, so we'll put one here. We have a total amount of knowledge of one, two, three, four, five. That's awesome. We were at zero, we're now at five. We have a total amount of ore of one, two, three, four, five. That is what I'm talking about. We're at nine ore. So much better than last time. And we're gaining five more gold. One, two, three, four, five. We're almost at 30 gold. We are set for this round. We are yet again foregoing the Gaia phase. I don't think I'm going to be doing that this game again. <laughs> it is what it is. I'm having so much fun with knowledge this time. I love it. We'll move right to the action phase. That means the AI is going first. We're starting this round with the AI. They are going to do an upgrade, gaining three victory points. That'll move them up to 66 points. They have no more trading stations left, so they're going towards the space stations now because you cannot upgrade to an academy until you have a space station. So they're now looking at closest to our planets. This one is within range one, and this one is within range one. So then they go by reading order of bottom to top based on the card, and that means they're going to do this one. We'll lose one victory point to gain two charges. We'll move down to 37. Two charges lets us move one and one, and we have one, two, three, four, five to play with. We'll then spend four of these for our first action, and we all know what we're going to do, two more ore. We now have 11 ore. The AI is going to score three more points. Gosh, they just keep blowing us. And then take the space two from the left. They will move one, two, three to 69, and they took the double terraforming spot. We're going to place out a mine in another yellow planet, so we have to spend one terraforming that only cost us one ore. Then we have to spend one more for the actual mine itself and two gold, and we can put out another mine. This can be within range two of our buildings. We're going to place it here since we already have a yellow planet, and that is not a new sector. Nothing to update on the scoring tracker. The AI will then do an advance on their highest tracker on the tech track and gain a point. That will be this one. They'll now score four points for that at the end of the game and move up to 70 points. I love all this ore production we have here, but in order to make a federation, we need seven power. So that means we need to do some upgrades to trading posts. I'm going to do one that is within range two of the AI. So only three gold, one, two, three, two ore, one, two. We'll grab this one. Let's upgrade the one we just placed out right here. The AI will then move up a random track. It's going to be four from the left, gaining two points as well. Two more points, one, two, and four from the left. One, two, three, four. They're gonna start moving up this track. Let's place out another trading post. Two gold, one, two, and one, two ore, and actually three gold. <laughs> three gold and two ore. This blue planet is within range two of the AI planets, so that's why it only cost two, uh, three total gold instead of six. We now have power here of two, four, five, six. We just need to upgrade one more of these, and we can make a federation. Apparently, this round, the AI is all about upgrades on the tech track. <laughs> 
they're going to move up by one on the tech track one to the right and score no points. Well, that was the best card combo I've seen for them. That's their first action they've done with no points. Our third trading post, one, two, three, and one, two, is what we're going to do next. We'll choose this planet to upgrade. It's within range two of the AI, so the cost was only three gold instead of six. The AI is now going to try and place out a mine, and they are going to do it within range two, looking at variety of planet types. They are also going to score three points, one, two, three. Within range two of their planets, I only see a brown, which they don't have, a yellow, which they don't have, and a blue, which they don't have. Everything else within range two are planet types that they already control. So then we look at the fewest terraforming steps. The blue one is the least amount of terraforming steps, so they're going to choose that one. This means that we, if we would like, can lose one victory point to gain two power. Of course, I should say charge two power, and I think we're going to do that. Who needs points anyways, right? It's not like we're trying to beat them and we're only at 36 and they're at 75. <laughs> But, you know, two power is two power. We're then going to create a federation for our action. We lost two power, so we can place two satellites here. We have two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is now a federation. Here we have our federation tokens we can choose from. Let's grab this one that gives us eight points and a QIC. We can use the QIC to terraform a Gaia planet, which is why I want that. We'll gain eight points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we score five more points, one, two, three, four, five, because of the round scoring tile. That felt pretty good. That's one of the federations I'm hoping to build. The uh, AI will then block the first spot on the left, gaining one point. That means we can't gain three knowledge, and that will slide them up to 76 points. In order for us to terraform a Gaia planet, all we need is a QIC. So I have our QIC here, and then we're going to place a mine because we have a range of two on one of those Gaia planets. That will cost us two gold and one ore. We're down to two. We have a Gaia planet here within range two, and this means we're on our sixth of the seven sectors, and that will put us in the lead. Not to mention, it's another planet type. We have six now, and six were tied here for sectors. Don't forget, because we colonized a new planet type, one, two, three, we gain three knowledge as well. We're now at eight. The AI will then try and upgrade. Let's see if they actually do it. They don't. They're gonna take the middle round booster and gain five points. And of course, grab the next card and put it into their deck. Five points ticks them to 81. The middle round booster is this one. We'll slide this back in and they will be first player for the last round. We have eight knowledge we can play with. Let's use our first four and go up on one of our tech tracks. We're going to move up the terraforming tech track. Now, in order for us to do this, we have to take one of our Federation tiles that we have and flip it over. We're going to flip this over to the gray side. That means we can't use that for any of the other tracks but we just gained another Federation token, gaining seven points plus five, so that's 13 points and two more ore. We're at 49 right now. We'll go to 59 for 10, 11, 12, 13. We're at 62. Two more ore also means we have five ore remaining. There are so many great options here as to what I could do next. I could put out a space station. I have enough ore and enough gold. Uh, but then I'm upgrading something that's already in a federation. I'm hoping I can do one more federation at the end of the game. So what I'm thinking of doing is upgrading just to a trading post. But this one is not within range two of our opponent. So I'm going to have to spend six gold. One, two, three, four, five, six. But I think that's okay because look at how much money I'm going to get. Still only two ore. And we're going to have to place a mine back here. And that's fine because we weren't gaining anything from that anyways. I'm going to do the one here on our Gaia planet. For my final action this round, I am going to use my foreknowledge. Now, I debated long and hard on this because next round, every time we move up the tech track, we gain two points. So I'm foregoing two points, but I do think what I'm gaining for this is beneficial. We're going to move up on the income track, so that way I gain one additional ore at the beginning of the next round. Otherwise, I would never gain that benefit. The gold and the power charging are okay. I think I have not enough power to really make it a difference that I'm gaining four here. 
but one or sometimes that can really make or break things. I will then pass for our penultimate round. I'm going to grab this round marker, hoping I can get all three space stations out. That'll be worth nine points. And I love my knowledge. <laughs> We've removed our action markers. We'll flip this over. I did give them their five points. Yes, I'm pretty sure I did. If I didn't, I'll make a note. One more round. Let's do some income, shall we? I'm going to gain that power first, and then I can charge four. So one, two, three, four. I'll gain 16 money here and three ore plus three knowledge. 16 money. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 3 ore, 1, 2, 3, and 3 knowledge, 1, 2, 3. We'll then gain one additional knowledge here, which is 4. Another knowledge for this one, 5, and another gold. And then how about, you know, 4 more gold, 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll gain 2 more ore, 4 more gold, and charge 4 more power. We'll slide this one power here. We're all maxed out. 2 more ore is awesome and for gold the most we can hold is 30. Still no Gaia forming so that means we'll move right into the action phase. Final action round, let's do it. AI is going to start with a faction action taking over spot five from the right and gaining four points because of their card. That'll move them from 81 to 85. Five from the right, one, two, three, four, five and that's a bummer because then they're gonna take this one the next one five from the right and that means i can't gain two additional knowledge there we're going to spend all five of our power two four five to gain two terraforming so that we can spend one ore and two gold and gain three more knowledge one two three because we're going to terraform a brown planet you can see right here the brown planet needs two terraforming steps we used this action space and the brown planet is right here within range two, still not on a new sector. However, that is the seventh out of the eight different planet types. We're doing quite well here compared to the AI. It looks like the AI is going to do another power action, this time choosing three from the right and gaining one point. That puts them up to 86 points. I don't have any QICs, so taking the QIC actions aren't nearly as bad. We'll then use four of our eight knowledge to move up on one of the tech tracks and gain two points. This will move us up to 64 points. We're going to move up this track by one. That gives us a free power charging of three and gives us another QIC. Actually, that's our first one. We need that to be able to do another Gaia formed planet. The AI will score three points and do an upgrade and I'm realizing I forgot to charge my three power. We want all the power we can get. <laughs> they have one trading post available for upgrade, so we have two mines here. They're both within range two of one of our planets, so we just go from the uh, directional uh, choosing, and that's from bottom to top, so that means this one will upgrade, and we can lose one victory point for two power, and I think it's worth it. I know, I know, it's one victory point in the final round, but I just want my power. We'll snag that two power and put it here. We'll then spend five gold, one, two, three, four, five, and three ore, one, two, three, down to three, to be able to put out a space station. And of course, because we're doing that, we'll gain a tactile. We'll place that space station here. The tactile we're going to gain is this one, which will give us one knowledge for every single type of planet that we have terraformed, and that's seven. <laughs> so we're gonna gain seven knowledge. Also, since we chose the bottom area, we can choose any one of these tracks to go up. We're gonna go up on this one by one, and that means we scored two more points. We're at 65. Seven plus four is 11 knowledge. That's what we're at now. Next, the AI will build a mine. Let's see. They're doing it within range two, looking at planet variety, and they'll score one point. They're now at 90 points compared to our 65. I only see three planets that they are within range two that they do not already have a building on. That's the brown and the yellow planets. So the next thing we look at is terraforming steps. The brown is less than the yellow, so we'll remove this. And then it's the closest ones to our buildings. That is going to be this one. Uh, that means we can lose two victory points to gain three power. Yep, I'm gonna do it. 
They only need one more planet type too to tie the neutral player and that will score them 9 points instead of only 6 points at the end of the game. We'll lose 2 points to gain that sweet 3 power. It's back to our turn. We are going to lose 1 power to gain 4 into bowl 3 and use all 4 here to do a power action. We want 2 more ore. Ore is the spice of life. This means the AI will go next doing a random uh, upgrade on the tech track and gaining 2 points 3 from the right. 2 points moves them up to 92 and 3 from the right means they're 1 away from starting to score points for this track. Let's now place a mine on one of the Gaia planets. We'll use this QIC so we can terraform there. We spend 1 ore and 2 gold and we can place that out. This is the final sector we do not have a building in. We now have a building in every sector. We've got two in this sector. We've got two here. We have two here, one here, one here, two here, and one right here. This means we can sneak past the neutral player. We're now set to gain 18 points unless the AI can catch up to us, which then we would uh, take 18 and 12 and divide it by two. The AI is going to do another power action, they love those, gaining 3 points and taking spot 2. 3 more points puts them up to 95. Spot 2 is the 7 gold spot. Why don't we spend 4 of our knowledge next, 1, 2, 3, 4. This will score us 2 points, going back to 65. We are going to flip over this federation token that we have. We still have one more that's green to move here. This gives us a one-time effect of 3 ore, 6 gold, and charge 6 power. 3 ore, 1, 2, 3, 6 gold, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 6 power, 4 plus 2 is 6. The AI will score 1 point and go up on that terraforming track by 1. Oh, and they're going to do another mine. That card essentially scored them 5 points. They can no longer go up on the terraforming track up to 5. If they would, I believe they take this tile instead. We're going to use 4 more of our knowledge. 1, 2, 3, 4, going down to 3. Gaining 2 more victory points to 67. Having to flip this federation token, so we no longer have any federation tokens we can use to get to the 5th spot. But now we can place the lost planet. This is considered a mine, so we can place it here, and we put one of our satellite tokens on here to denote that we control it. It's considered to have one power, so we have one, two, three, four, five power here. The AI will then grab three points trying to build a mine looking at sector variety, range two. Three more points puts them at 99. The only way they can get to a new sector is over here at range 2, so they're going to take this Gaia planet. That will give them another sector, but not a new planet type. They're not quite caught up to the neutral player yet, and that was within range 2 of one of our mines, so we can passively charge 1 power. That means we have 3 power available in Bowl 3. Our next action will be to upgrade to a trading post. This one is not within range 2 of our opponent, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2 to put it out. We're going to choose this one here. We have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're so close to a federation. The AI will randomly move up one of the tech tracks. Uh, yes, they will, because there's a green symbol. I realize these are the last three cards, so they may have not done it, scoring no points, moving one up on the track, one space on the right. If they gain one more of those, that will score them four points. I'm going to place out a mine on a blue planet. That costs two ore to do that, plus one ore and two gold, and we'll place this out. This can be within range four. I'm going to choose here. The AI will discard this card, and they do retire here. They would grab a round booster based on this, but that doesn't matter for this last round, so we're not going to worry about it. They will simply score 4 points. That will put them to 1, 2, 3, 4, 103. The last action I believe I'm going to be taking is creating a federation. I'm going to lose, well I'll keep this one, I'll lose 3 power to do so. We have 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, and 1 more is 7. That's our third federation. We'll grab this 12 victory point federation token. You can see it doesn't have a green side, so we can't use it to do any of those federation abilities. 
Uh, but it doesn't matter because this is going to be our last action. The 12 points we gained, we're at 67. We'll go to 75, 66, 77. And then we'll add two more. We're at 79. We'll then turn in our round booster for nine more points. That'll move us to 88 points. We can now move to final scoring, and this is where I kicked the AI's butt. <laughs> uh, they just really weren't doing great on these. They, they'll score 12 total points, and we'll score a total of 36, 18 for each of these. That puts us in the lead at 124 compared to 116, but we're not done yet. We'll score 12, 24, 36 points for where we are on these tech tracks. The AI will score 8. That means we're at 160 to 124. Finally, we would score three points for every set of three of our remaining resources of gold, knowledge, and ore. We had three ore, three knowledge, so each of those are one point. One, one. And we had 19 gold. That will give us six more points. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we scored 168 to 124. That doesn't normally happen. The AI is usually much more competitive than that. I think the mine cards that they drew just happened to keep them in the same areas for whatever reason. But regardless, I hope this helps you get this game to the table. Try out the Geodins. They are fantastic. I love how much they move up the tech track. I love being able to start right away with so much ore you can get stuff onto the table. Yeah, each faction is just so different. Oh. Okay, let me know what faction you want to see next. I'm definitely going to do another playthrough. Maybe not right away. As you can tell, I lost my voice and it's 2.45 in the morning. <laughs> so I need to go to bed. But thank you so much for watching as always. And sorry if I made any errors. Let me know in comments below. If I don't catch it in editing, I'll put them in those Klingon subtitles. Thanks again and I'll catch you at the next stop.